What is up guys and girls in today's video i thought i would do a fun comparison and write the same article using the chat gpt playground mode using the chat gpt web app and using a chat gpt gpt to see which one of those variations of chat gpt will give me the best quality blog post and the best output so let's go ahead and get started. The first place on which I generated the article was on the playground mode. So first what I did was I prompted the system to tell it that it's an SEO optimized blog post writer. And then I also use my prompts that I regularly use to generate my outline and then the full article. If you like to use these prompts for yourselves, you can find the prompts in the description below today's video. So essentially what I first did was I generated an outline on the topic, how to start, grow and monetize an online blog about gardening. So that is a topic which I'm going after. And as you can see here, we get some pretty good um, outlines from GPT. I did use GPT-4 Turbo, and then I use GPT-3.5 to expand the article, as you will see shortly. So this is the um, this is the introduction. This is the first couple of sections, and this is the overall outline for this specific article. Then what I did was I prompted the AI to write the full article, and I wrote the full article, including a table of contents, so it went ahead and wrote the full article, but it wasn't really expanded. As you can see here, there was just a couple of sentences. So then I told it to expand the article. I used GPT 3.5 Turbo to expand the article. And now we have this full uh, in-depth article. And this is what it looks like on a Google Doc. So how to start, grow, and monetize an online business. This is about 2,000 words, 2,500 words that we got from the playground mode. So as you can see here, we got a pretty good blog posts using the playground mode i would like to have a chart or a table included in here and maybe some external links but that's the only thing which i would add onto this article other than that i think that this is a very very good article so that was the first article the second article was used generating the chat gpt web application i didn't use any plugins i didn't use any gpts this is just strictly using the web app so i pasted in the same prompts to prime the ai to let it know how to write seo optimized content as I did in the playground mode. And then I told it, do you understand? It says, yes, it understands. And then I told it to write the full article, but first start by generating an outline. So this is the outline, how to start, grow, and monetize an online blog about gardening. We get an intro, we get section one, section two with H2s, section four and a conclusion. So it seems to be a little bit shorter in terms of the outline. And then we get the full article here, how to start, grow, and monetize an online business. We get the table of contents here, which looks nice. Then we get some um, some schema formatting here, which is good for SEO. Starting your gardening blog, choosing the right niche in gardening, choosing a blog platform, creating your blog's name and domain, growing your blog. But again, as you can see here, some of the content is very, very short, just kind of like the issue we had before with, um, with the playground mode. So I told it to continue writing the content. And then at the end, I told it to expand on the article just so that we have a much larger article and much more content. And this is the expanded content. So as you can see here, I would say that this content could be expanded a little bit more. There is some nice list, but I would like some more um, informational and more um, relevant content for this specific article. I think overall, this article was about a thousand words that we got back from um, the GPT web application without using any plugins or any other um, any other integrations, just GPT-4. So this was the article from the web app. Now, what I also did was I used a GPT and I've done a review of this GPT before. It's called the Automated Blog Post Writer. So if you want to see a full tutorial on how to use this, I'll leave a link for that GPT in the description below. The first thing that I did was I generated the outline for this article. As you can see here, this is the outline in which we were able to get back. And I didn't really prompt this too much because this GPT is already pre-prompted. That's the reason why you use a GPT. So I just wanted it to generate the outline first using its own prompting and its own um, its own ideation on how to generate a blog post that's SEO optimized. So first, as you can see here, it's generating the outline. Then we have the conclusion and then it has some keywords in which it will integrate throughout the article. And then I told it to write the full article. So gardening is more than just a hobby. We get the table of contents, starting the gardening blog, choosing the right platform, creating a content strategy, growing your audience, monetizing your gardening blog and a conclusion. So again, I thought that this was pretty short. So I told it to expand the article again, using the same prompt that I use on the playground mode. So it went ahead and expanded the article, included more information, more list, 
and um, a much longer article. But again, I still think that this can be improved by adding in more content. Overall, again, again this is about a thousand words. So we see that there's a big difference in the output content or the output um, quantity when we use the web app compared to the playground mode. The playground mode was able to give us um, over 2000 words while it is kind of hard to get over 1500 words. But again, I think that is just because of the method in which we used. If we were to generate the outline and then tell the AI to generate each section by section using the web app, I'm sure we would be able to get much longer um, content. But I wanted to use the same format that I use on the playground mode in the web app mode so that we can compare apples to apples. So those are the three articles. I would say that the article from the playground mode stood out. Um, it is much longer. It's much more in depth. It has a lot more content. It seems to be much more SEO optimized. It's well formatted. It's easy to read. Um, and I would say that this is a much better article compared to both of the other articles. The second um, highest article I would say was the article that we got back using the GPT, the automated blog post writer. I think that this is a really, really good GPT. If you don't want to use a playground mode or if you're very inexperienced using chat GPT, that I recommend using this GPT. And my least favorite article was the article that we got back using just the regular web app. I think you really need to know how to prompt the AI in the right way. And I also think it makes a difference once you generate each section by section for your outline compared to telling the AI to generate the full article, you will get better results when you generate section by section. So even though I prefer the playground mode and I recommend using the playground mode over using the ChatGPT web application, there is some benefits of using the web app and the main benefit is that you have the ability to use Dolly 3 right directly into um, the web application. So for example, I can tell the AI to create three or four images related to this blog post. Unfortunately, I do not have the ability to switch between Dolly 3 in the playground mode. I only have the ability to switch in between text models using the playground mode. So that's why it's probably easier for you to get better text outputs from the playground mode. While it's a little bit harder to get that, on GPT-4 because there's a bunch of different models. But as you can see here, we're able to generate very nice images easily, and then we can pop those images into our blog post. If we were to do that in the playground mode, then we would have to generate the prompts for our images from the article, and then we would have to pop that into GPT-4 and have the images being created. So it takes an additional step for you to create an image, while it's much easier for you to create an image using um, Dolly 3 if you're creating the article right into the web app. So that makes it a lot easier. As you can see here, we get a nice um, little infographic here. We can always go ahead and edit the words so that there's no spelling errors, but it just makes it much easier for you to generate images for your blog posts when you're using the web app. But overall, I would still recommend using the playground mode. I think you have much more customization options. You have the ability to play around with your temperature settings. You have the ability to play around with your maximum length, your frequency penalty, and your presence penalty, even though I don't really use these metrics. You have much more customization options. You can switch in between models to save you uh, money. And also, you're charged directly by the API. So usually, the cost is a lot less when you're using the playground mode compared to if you're using ChatGPT+, but it really depends on how much content you are writing. But overall, I still recommend using the playground mode. I find that you get the best outputs. But if you are a beginner, then I would recommend using a GPT like the automated blog post writer. And you can always combine that GPT with generating images by using Dolly 3. And in addition to using Dolly 3, you can also upload files. You also have access to plugins and the code interpreter when you're using the web app. So overall, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you learned something new. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.